My days working, taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald. Thank you for listening to this PowerCat podcast. Make sure you never miss an episode of the PowerCat podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast network. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a subscriber to GoPowerCat.com. We cover the Wildcats like no one else with our VIP customers enjoying one-of-a-kind coverage from our team of professional journalists. And sign up today for an annual subscription to GPC and grab a 30% discount on your first year. And now here's the PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Insiders podcast, presented by Commerce Bank, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the PowerCat Insiders Podcast brought to you by Commerce Bank. We get to talk about a victory this week. Tim Fitzgerald, Matt Walters, Kellis Robinette, and Ryan Black, your insiders that are not wanting to be outside on a chilly day. Kansas State defeats TCU 24-17. And before we get to the nuts and bolts here, I need to make a public confession. So every post game, they bring in a big stack of statistics books for the media. And at the end of the uh, media session with the players, they were sitting on top of a cooler. And I don't know, we've never had a cooler in there before. And there was cold water in there. So I grabbed a, a water. But to do that, I had to pick up the stats. And I grabbed the cold water. And I got back to the office. And I had all the stats in my hand still. So if anyone was missing a stats book from the media because they, they were all gone, I stole them. Approximately how many packets? Six. So there, I think most everyone got one. That story didn't go how I thought it was going to go. Yeah, I didn't see here. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be like. What was the point? There? I don't know why you told it. I feel guilty. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you dropped. That's what I was saying. I thought you were going to say, and you just soaked all of them, and now the stats are running, and, and no one can read them, and so you felt terrible. I feel guilty. Wow. Stop feeling guilty. So, I, if anyone needs a stats book, I'm selling them for hundred dollars a piece, autographed by Kellis Robinette. <laughs> Kellis should get five. What a bargain! What get five dollars for that. <laughs> We're sponsored by Commerce Bank, and here's Matt Walters. Whatever financial challenges come your way, Commerce Bank can help. Commerce Bank challenge accepted. Okay, I'm going to just throw this out there. I want to take an opinion, a thought from everyone on that game and how K State played. Matt, let's start with you. Yeah, that, it's kind of hard to sum up. K State did enough good things and did not enough bad things <laughs> to win. Um, I was glad to see Malik Knowles cowboy up in the second half. He's big. I think he, I may be wrong, but I think maybe he'd been challenged because there's a difference between being hurt and injured. Um, I thought Skyler leading K State on that ninety plus yard drive was was huge. And you know, when you if you afterwards say, Hey, K State had two hundred and sixty six yards of total offense and they win the ball game, you're like, No way. And they did. But they also <laughs> held TCU to almost hundred yards underneath its average. So very true. Callus. I would say K State played average and TCU did nothing after it tied the game at 17-17. Yeah, they just kind of shut it down. I, th I almost feel like they felt like they were going to win. Yeah. They had the game. Well, that was my reaction when Duggan ran that in on that crazy scramble and tied it. I actually turned to the guy next to me and said, TCU's going to win. I might, we might start thinking about what we're going to write here. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't really do another positive thing the whole rest of the game. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll sum it up very similar to Matt and just that, again, K-State did enough 
to win and just not enough to lose. You know, I think the thing kind of uh, on Kellis's point, and I thought it was going to be a different point that he was going to pick, but it's just that, man, it seemed like their offense finally got into rhythm, and, and God bless his soul because I, you know, as a media member, I do love Alex Delton. It didn't make any sense when they inserted him in the game because it seemed like the, the TCU offense had just gotten to rhythm, and they bring him in, quick three and out, and it seemed like it then took them a while to get back into that same rhythm after As that. Someone told me that was a very K-State thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it felt like last year's K-State team. That's exactly yeah. what it felt like. Let's put in Alex, and let's have him throw. Yeah, it had him throw. Yeah, he didn't have a carry. It was kind of strange. The whole day was a little bit strange. And it's, uh, the reason I ask this is we do a post game podcast, and Brian Hanley and I break it down, but we're doing it, you know, right in the window after the game. And as, as you guys know, uh, sometimes the fog of everything that just took place, it's hard to identify storylines in some games. And for me, this this game, even though it hardly came up, it did come up, but it really wasn't a topic we talked about much. K State. Uh, lost offensively, lost defensively, but won in special teams. This was almost an old-style K-State victory. They did enough in special teams to compensate for the shortcomings they had on the other two sides of the ball. And Devin Anktel was amazing. He kept flipping the field on TCU and making him go a long ways. And, of course, the block punt, you just can't emphasize enough how important it was for K-State to score, which was – and remarkable in itself, they've got a touchdown out of it because they'd struggled so much. But they made TCU either play from behind uh, or just play with a tie the whole game. And I've, I, I just felt a burden come off K-State's shoulders right then. I did not see, because when I got back upstairs, they weren't available. But when was the last time K-State blocked a punt? Oh, I didn't even check the notes. I didn't. Prior I, to... That's a good question. Um, a did it not years? happen last year? That's why we call ourselves the insiders. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't recall them blocking a punt last year off the top of my head. Just being honest. But I think Kansas State, while it did have, again, some deficiencies on offense, at least when they have that, drive, that first drive, you know, again, it's a short drive, mm-hmm. but they stuck it in the end zone, and I think that gave them uh, a little bit of confidence. You know, the fact that, Winters gets down the seam and Skyler's pass is right on target. And, uh, and he caught it. And he, and he caught it. Um, you think later on in the game, if if Skyler doesn't overthrow Wyking Gill, there's uh-huh. that's an easy six. But the fact that K State scored that early in the ball game, I think, benefited them and kind of gave them a little bit of wiggle room because TC's not great offensively. And you know, I didn't think TC was going to come out and score thirty five or forty points, but. Uh, that, again, is that just enough kind of statement early on. That's what I find curious. Why isn't TCU good offensively? Their quarterback actually played a decent game. He ran the ball like nobody could have ever predicted. They got a great running back. They got some really talented receivers. They baffle me more than K-State does. I can't figure out TCU. They, they need a quarterback who can throw. That's mm-hmm. They didn't complete a pass more than 18 yards in this game. and That's a real shame when they've got Jalen Rager just sitting there who might be yep. one of the two best receivers in the conference. And He's there were times the they, they tried early on uh, on the first series. They had a guy on a fly route burn Walter Neal by six yards and Max Duggan couldn't come within 10 yards of him on his deep throw. So, I mean, yeah. that, that they left – K-State basically dared him to throw deep all game, and every time they tried, it was just hilariously off. So, they were – I mean, Kansas State took advantage. I thought other than the quarterback scrambles, I thought the defense was pretty good to hold them to 17 points and 366 yards. My biggest positive was on the other side, though, to actually see some big plays for once, even though there weren't a ton of them. I think it was five or six they had go for 20-plus yards, and that's something we just haven't seen lately. Yeah, it, that run by Skyler uh, was remarkable, particularly when, you know, they come into the post game and Skyler talks about they recognized it on film. They knew this would work and they got they showed him the right defense and he knew the play would work. And I'm thinking the amount of patience by Courtney Messingham to save that <laughs> ace in the hole for that moment, because I would have used it in the first half. It had been like a toy I couldn't put away and. You know, who knows? It might have worked repeatedly on them uh, because, obviously, there's a huge flaw in that defense. I've, I've never seen it that open in the middle of the field. And, and if it had been, a, you know, a Jalen Hurts or someone with some serious wheels, it just would have been gone. Now, I, and I, I like what, what you, uh, Fitz, and what Fikellis has said about their offense because, I mean, you look at Darius Anderson, number two, to Chuba, who K-State's already played. And then, like in, in Rager, he might be the best 
receiver who's not Tylen Wallace. So if they had their version of Spencer Sanders, uh, like I said, in someone terms who can throw the ball, they, they really would be something something offensively. There was one play I vividly remember where they had K-State manned up Rager on the right side all alone, and I was just thinking, what in the world are they doing? You're going to man that guy up? And they didn't even, they did not even look at him. Like it, their quarterback didn't even think about it. He, in his head, he must have thought, I can't complete this throw, so why bother? Was Duggan's 46 yard touchdown the slowest 46 yard touchdown you guys have ever seen? <laughs> they could have timed that with like a, like a, what do you call it? The hourglass. Sundial? Yeah. Uh, sundial. sundial. I mean, it was like, I mean, because I, I just kept waiting for like the play to end, and it's like, oh, he's, he's actually going to make it all the way to the end zone. He's still running. He's still, he just ran over a free safety. He's still running. Who didn't try to wrap him up? Just try <laughs> At to, all. Just try to give him the big shot. Oh, right man. in the middle of the chest. Like, that's going to work. I mean, yeah. not even at his legs or torso. Oh, and then, I mean, A.J. Parker, still, he still got skid marks on his face. That was just horrible. It was... But he did a pretty good job on. Well, he at least made an effort. I was just saying that ta- he tried to tackle him. He had him manned up yep. most of the day, and he made he yep. made some nice yep. plays. Yep. And you know, I'm, after McPherson goes out at nickel, they put in Jonathan Durham, and I noticed him matched up with Rager a couple times. And one time he broke up the pass across the middle. Another time, they threw it a little bit downfield towards Rager, and he was right there with him. I I, I agree with you. This K State team shows you. I want to say less bad things every week now in Big 12 play. And this was enough good to offset the bad to get over the hump, maybe because TCU is underperforming. But I guess back to Kelsey's point, TCU proves the old uh, thought that, hey, if you don't have a quarterback, you're not a very good team. Because they have the ingredients to be a good team, Mm -hmm. except for that one thing. And that one's kind of important. I don't. I made the, I made this comment during the broadcast at the very end when Skyler scores what proves to be the winning touchdown. If you go back and watch that play again, uh, Blackshear, who's the transfer from South Carolina, just totally gave zero effort on that play. I mean, he and Blacklock were, were two pretty good guys inside, mm-hmm. but Blackshear took two steps to his right, standing straight up. And Skyler went right by him. And if you guys didn't see it, Blacklock lit him up. So I can imagine what tape session was like on Sunday night or today, this morning. So just, he, just he, he could have made the tackle and he was didn't? right there. He hmm. If he stays where he's supposed to, instead of assuming and taking two steps in towards the middle, Skyler uh-huh. Thompson runs right into him. Yeah, TC's got some issues. This this conference fascinates me because you look at the standings now, and finally we've seen some separation. We knew Oklahoma and Texas were up there, but Baylor and Iowa State have joined them. The other six teams are below 500 in conference play. So we, we've kind of seen that separation, and TCU might be headed right down towards the bottom because that team's got some issues and a tough schedule coming up. Well, I want to ask you guys, because you might remember, I went on the record here a few weeks ago and said, K-State would beat Baylor and TCU. Uh, After K-State lost to Baylor in the fashion Mm -hmm. that they did, I did not pick K-State to beat TCU. I don't know if you guys were any different. No, Uh, I picked TCU. I didn't. I've whiffed on the last four games. Yeah, so. yeah I, I'm, I was of the belief you got to show me you've changed, yeah. you've improved, and, and they've done it. However, with that said, I'm not going to pick them this week. Oh, well. No. I mean. I'm not even picking them with the spread. So, um, yeah, I th- there's vast amounts of room for improvement on this K-State team. And I find it interesting how much Chris Kleiman has changed the tone. I'm not worried about outcomes. You know, to start off, this isn't a rebuild. You know, now I'm not worried about outcomes. Um but it, who isn't? He is, and and being at four and two, and going to Oklahoma, going into Oklahoma, coming to Manhattan is a lot better than being three and three. Well, yeah. it, it's something that last week on on the podcast I do with with my sports writer uh, Sean Collins, and I think we even touched on it here early in the season was that you know to me that that win Saturday was really the spring the swing game that you know K State needed to win to you know see the path to a bowl game now because mm-hmm. I mean you think okay. They now just need two more wins, and you think maybe, probably West Virginia and KU that that would be the two the two games. Maybe even uh, Texas Tech, or uh, I don't think I'd pick them against Iowa State right now. And hey, Texas looked extremely vulnerable, you know, Saturday. Uh, so I I still don't think I would pick K State in that game. But they oh. the only game that is just so hard to see them winning is is this week. It's just barring just. Jalen Hurts going out with an injury and, and Thompson playing the game of his life and the defense actually tackling 
uh, it just seems very hard to, to imagine a victory Saturday. Well, when you've had Max Duggan run for 115 yards <laughs> on you, the thought of Jalen Hurts keeps me up at uh, night, and I'm not even going to yeah. play the game. Oh, it, yeah. the, the thing that seems so weird about their explanation as to why Duggan – did you guys find it weird that their explanation for his success was that they spent so much time worrying about Alex Dickinson? On Delton, that, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I heard Jordan he, Mitty he say that scramble. exactly. If if you were preparing for a QB scramble all week, you should be able to do it against the, the slower guy, right? I would I don't, think so. I don't, <laughs> that almost <laughs> that like, doesn't compete with me. You put in a slower guy and he runs all over you. Does that mean they were going to schematically do something entirely different with Delton on the field? Because I didn't see it when they did put Delton on the field. Maybe they did. Maybe I just missed it, and that's why TCU threw the ball. So something I want to bring up that, and again, guys, you might be like, oh, my gosh, Ryan, how, how much of a dunce are you? But the one thing I'd never thought about with these quarterback scrambles, it was something that we'll Denzel, Denzel Goolsby brought up, was that, yeah, it's frustrating that we give up these yards on broken plays, but you know what? It's also a testament. And, again, we're talking about scrambles, not designed QB runs. Right. It's a testament to us in the secondary, you know, having them covered up. Right. Because otherwise he he would have let it loose and, and threw the ball. So I just like I'd never thought about that. You know that at least showed that in coverage the K State defensive backs were doing their jobs. That Duggan felt the need to you know tuck it and run so much. And I just like I just literally never thought about that. The the highlight run was a design play though. Well yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying. But the vast majority of his runs were not design runs. It was like him just running around saying, "Okay, well, no one's open. I'm just going to run it." But to Ryan's earlier point, it's a highlight run, but you can't put it on the highlight reel because it'll take forever. <laughs> <laughs> I do. The funny thing about that too is that I I think some people all they remember about that game is that one play, and it paints the defense in too bad of a light. I've had I gave the defensive unit a B in my report card this week, and people were saying I was crazy. How could I do that? I'm like, well, they. Gave up 17 points and only allowed 366 yards. What yeah. grade do you right. give? I mean, yeah, they look. Hey. Yeah, that one play was an F, F minus, as bad as you'll see. But overall, I thought they actually looked, looked pretty they'd, good. They'd scored 34 plus four times. Right, right. So it's not like they're anemic. K State's defense did play pretty well. I think that play might be a blessing because that play, if you were involved in it or just a member of the team, was humiliating. Oh yeah, it just emphasized. The embarrassment of not tackling with fundamentals can cause. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just it just went and showed um, how poor they are sometimes in doing things that they've been told to do over and over and over again. And so maybe being absolutely called out publicly like that on film will get that to change. It's, I don't know. Issue, it's that issue with a lot of teams, though. I know. Well, it's it's like anything else. Trying to convince a eighteen, nineteen, twenty year old kid that. You know, what you're saying actually is wise isn't always easy. So um, I'm sure that's going to be run over and over and over again to get Wayne Jones to wrap up. Well, it's exactly something that that, uh, defensive coordinator Scotty Hazleton said, you know, uh, in the availability last Thursday was he's like, that's maybe the only positive sometimes you take out of losses is sometimes when you're showing these guys on film the mistakes they make, but then the team wins, you're you're more like, ah, whatever. But he's like, you know, when it happens in a loss, it's more of of a jarring thing. You're like, wow, you know, I really – not that you shouldn't have been doing this already, but it really sticks with you more when you're like, well, if I'd maybe done my job here, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. K-State did get away with the win. As I mentioned, they did enough to get the victory. And I want to touch on Malik Knowles. Um, that sounded dirty. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, after some of those catches, okay, I'll do it. Uh, he really does make a difference. And hey, sure. and I almost think in some ways it makes Skyler more comfortable because he has him out there. But lo and behold, they put Malik out. They got out of the man coverage on the edges. They went to a little more zone, and it did change how TCU needed to defend Kansas State. And Malik made some catches. He made an incredibly tough catch right in front of TCU's bench. Yeah. Uh, You're about the 33 yarder where he leaped up, yeah, yeah. down the sideline. Yeah, I was just editing photos of D-back that. D-back wasn't looking. Uh, still, it was not an easy catch. No. And again, he's K State's best wide receiver. The other guys did did their part on Saturday, but having him, I think, totally makes Skyler that much more mm-hmm. comfortable. And they they played young blood a lot more, and that adds something else out there. Gill stepping up and. Um, making some plays adds another dynamic. I just thought they were 
to use the word again, more dynamic in the passing game. They used a tight end. They just really kind of stretched TCU and, and found some deficiencies. Well, I don't think there's any question that, that, like you said, just Knowles being out there has to make Skyler feel better because he's the one guy for certain I think you have to feel, if I throw it in his direction, I've got maybe a better than 50% shot of him going up and getting it. And, and you know, we do think all the rest of the receivers are solid, but that I think Knowles is, is the one who has that just that extra dimension of yeah. – of, it wasn't really a swing pass per se, but the pass, it was in the fourth quarter where he slipped and went down at Ooh. about the 10 or the 15. That could have gone. If for... he doesn't slip, he's trying to put on a move. If he doesn't slip, he scores. Yeah. You're talking about the third down one where they picked up the first down, first or third down. nine? First, first down. down. Because right Skyler, Skyler Skyler's looking down the field. Oh, the Mal- first play of the 95-yard drive. Malik was okay. Yeah, sorry. Malik was kind of the outlet guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not your normal swing pass to a running back, or for that matter, a wide receiver. If he keeps his feet, the the defender's strap is laying on the ground, and he's gone. Uh, there was nobody else. Everybody else was on the other side of the field. Yeah, when that happened, I was thinking, man, how mad would you have to be as an offensive coordinator to call that and only get five yards out of it? I think that was just him being rusty and a little mm-hmm. bit hurt Part a little of it. bit. But, hey, to follow that up with a 61-yard QB draw, mm-hmm. pretty impressive. I thought Courtney Messingham called a heck of a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a yep. better game. Saw some the, different routes. Yep, the yep. first touchdown pass was great. They caught him looking on the play action. The second one, the gill was great. Design that beautifully, and then you're, what you're talking about. I love the Knowles play. That's one of the few times all season where I've seen a guy so open. I just, as it happened, I just involuntarily shouted like Knowles. <laughs> He's like he was that open. Yeah, there mm-hmm. wasn't anybody on that whole yeah. side of the field. And on Gill's touchdown catch, he really sold that route. Oh, it was a beautiful route. And, and when he stuck his foot in the ground and, and came back towards the post, I mean, it was it was wide open. K State again. K State's going to do some. Some more things. They're going to do some stuff against Oklahoma, I would imagine, that we haven't seen yet. Two weeks uh, at KU, they're going to do some mm-hmm. more stuff. We're just going to we're going to see more and more tape come off of this offense as we go. I was going to say that you, oh, I think we, one thing that we've noticed is that, you know, with, with Jordan Brown out, and that had been a big staple for the offense the first few games, at least trying to get the ball to the running backs, you know, in, in the passing game, was that they went to the tight ends and fullbacks more. Obviously, Leonard's had the touchdown. He threw another pass to Leonard's that hit Leonard's in the hands later in the, in the second quarter, and he dropped it. Uh, and I remember another time he threw it in, in Sammy Wheeler's direction. So, I mean, you just see that, again, with, with guys out, Phillip Brooks wasn't available coming off a career game at Baylor. Hey, I mean, like I said, they're opening up more of the playbook, and it, it certainly worked pretty well, even if the yardages don't tell the story of that. It was remarkable when you look at the stats and the fact that they, uh, prior to or excluding the Skylar Thompson run, they had 33 yards on 32 mm-hmm. runs. Yeah. yeah and they threw 11 passes. They completed 11 passes. It, it's crazy. They just were mostly inept on offense, but when they got in the red zone, they cashed in three of the four times. Um, and they That was just, a huge issue last season. Yeah. They, they made use of their opportunities. Well, you know, they were in the red zone. I, I don't have the number in front of me in the prior two games, but they ended up with two touchdowns in two games. And so to get that early touchdown, not just score, you get the, the block punt, you score in three plays, but you use a tight end to show something different. I just thought it just changed the context of the game from the get-go. And it, it changed everything for K-State. Well, and I know we. it just seems like we maybe beat this topic in the ground, guys, and I apologize for bringing it up again. But I think that maybe the only positive about Knowles, you know, being out so much these, these past two games is that we've seen other guys step up. We obviously saw Phillip Brooks against Baylor, seven catches, 69 yards, and then Joaquin Gill finally catching a touchdown. Nick Leonard's the same way. Is it, At least it has maybe broadened the offense so that maybe, depending on whenever he does get back to 100%, he said after the game he's 100%. I don't believe that at all because he was limping up to like the post-game little thing to take the step. But, of course, he has to say he's 100%. I'm just saying that, that maybe this really will be a blessing in disguise going forward is that there are other guys who have shown they can make plays in big games. I haven't been 100% for about 35 years. <laughs> More than that. Yeah. More yeah. than that. It's okay. Probably back to birth. I never wow. quite made it to 100% <laughs> wow. at any point in my life. This is the Powercat Insiders <laughs> Podcast. And just do the best you can. Yeah, I know. Ahead, I know. Man. I'm focusing at 37% right now. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm not falling out of my chair. Oh. We're sponsored by Commerce Bank. They're probably proud of us right now. And we'll be back after this short break. Stay locked in. The PowerCat Podcast will be right back. Picture this nightmare scenario. You're hosting friends for the big game. It's neck and neck in the fourth quarter, and suddenly you realize... 
you're out of drinks. You start to sweat. Your friends start to turn on you. You're forced to go on a last-second drink run and end up missing the game-winning touchdown while in line. (whistles) Terrifying, isn't it? Luckily, you can avoid the drama with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits, then get them delivered right to your watch party. Compare prices across multiple stores in your area, find the best deals on game day drinks, and get back to armchair quarterbacking from, you guessed it, your armchair. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. So I'm a father of what? I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Welcome back to the Powercat Insiders podcast sponsored by Commerce Bank as we start looking forward after K-State's 24-17 victory over TCU. Kansas State moves to 4-2 and two on the season, 1-2 and two in the Big 12 Conference. Oh boy, Chris Kleiman got his first Big 12 win and one heck of a man hug from Gene Taylor. Gene Taylor picked him up. I mean, I, I mean, I guess I did not know Taylor had that kind of, you know, strength. I'll be honest. Maybe, maybe. it's country strong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it. You know, and as much as they want to downplay it, it probably was a relief. Oh yeah. To oh, yeah. get this out of the way, because you do did know you got Oklahoma coming, then Kansas, which there's an awful lot of pressure on on the coach to win that game, uh, no matter who it is, and then Texas after that. So there's there was a. Probably a big sigh of relief, but Kansas State does get it done, and it really changes the context of the season. But first, let's tend to a little business right here. We're sponsored by Commerce Bank. Commerce Bank, with the technology and people to help with whatever financial challenges come your way. Commerce Bank challenge accepted. Let's talk about uh, the Big 12 a little bit. Uh, I, I don't see anyone, guys, beating Oklahoma. I just don't. I do. Conference. Who do you see? Oklahoma. Well, oh <laughs> man, shame. look at that! Here's wow. my here's my I'm thing. Not trying to be smart, but they're the only ones. Yeah, no. Uh, if yeah. they if they play poorly against Baylor, which could happen, that Baylor defense is legit and very sound. If they're that front is disruptive to Oklahoma, I still feel like Oklahoma can trip into enough points to win. Because that's exactly what it did against Texas, which might be the second best team in the league. That was a four touchdown game that was actually seven points on the board. Where did they play Baylor and Iowa State? Anybody know? Uh, I know. I, I know for certain that Baylor oh, uh, has Texas. Where do Iowa State? Yeah, and Baylor yeah where does play OU play Baylor and Iowa? State? Well, I know for certain. I guess I was reading this. I guess yesterday or the day before is that Baylor has Texas and Oklahoma at home. I think in back to back weeks. But I know for certain Oklahoma is at Baylor. I don't know about Iowa State. I think Iowa State's. Maybe an A. Uh, I think no, maybe it's in Ames. A. Maybe wrong, but I think it's an A. Iowa State's won in Norman before, though. They beat Baker mm-hmm. Mayfield there. Oh, that's I right. Think, yeah, uh, with their third string quarterback. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of him right now, but yeah. Well, huge upset. Baylor go has uh, excuse me plays host to West Virginia. Uh, then they go to TCU, and you're indeed right. Uh, in the middle of November, they play Oklahoma and Texas in Waco before closing at Kansas. Oh, oh. They have an opportunity, guys. They do. They really do. They've got very winnable road games with TCU and uh, KU. Baylor's defense took a shot when it lost Johnston against Texas Tech out for the year. Yeah. That was their – that dude's their heart and soul. Well, the conference is really interesting. I don't think it's very good except for one team. But I, I mean, I think Baylor's good but not great, and I think Texas is okay. But we got to talk about it, man. Kansas, Brent Deerman, holy cow, 48 points at Texas. And now, look, I, I, you see it all the time. New quarterback, in this case, a new offense coordinator. They throw something different at a team. Nothing's really been on film. And it's hard to defend. And the next week, and, everyone figures it out. And Texas was – They're not engaged. For what it's worth, they weren't engaged during the week of practice. They're getting ready to play Kansas. How many times can Texas make the same mistake in all sports? 
like, oh, we're just going to not really focus on KU or K-State, whatever the sport would be. It's crazy to me. But kudos to KU. And, and you, everyone wants to talk about the offense. I thought the biggest thing for KU was their their ability to just keep coming. They just kept coming back. They just kept making another play and making another play and getting the two-point conversion. And they just kept persisting, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. It was just really impressive. One and, thing Brent Derman in that short amount of time has done with that offense is he makes them believe. That's going to say the same that's, thing. That's half of the battle. So don't be surprised if KU does beat a couple of people with what they're doing. They're going to be a load. Texas didn't give a hoot last week in oh. practice. Missouri didn't give a hoot last week in practice. And Wisconsin Ooh. didn't give a hoot in Man, practice. Man, talk about two just god-awful losses. I mean, I know the, the Illinois win is the one that gets the most attention, but Vandy had just got smacked oh, at home UNLV. by one win at UNLV team. By 24. Yeah, by, yeah, it was like I got smacked. And then you know, I saw after the game that, that Derek Mason, Vandy's coach, made this big, huge, like, oh, I'm, I'm the right guy, and yeah. my guys believe I'm the right guy. And I'm like, wow, I mean. At least say what you th- you mean and say what you feel, and he he said it for sure. They beat K State at home too. Yeah, <laughs> but you know I saw that was the last time they had beat a ranked team. Vandy was the K State game in 2017. Mm-hmm. Prior to Saturday, teams from this area need to avoid Nashville. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I'll tell you though, with KU, I'm actually I never thought I'd say this, but I'm looking forward more to the Sunflower Showdown than I am a game against Oklahoma. I agree with you. Now this this week for me is like get through it. If you got a shot, you know, good for you. Things happen, like Matt said. Maybe Oklahoma looks right past Kansas State and get out of it from getting beat up. And yes, that's the yeah. most important. Avoid injuries. You know, in reality, you probably just need to not take a step back with injuries, so you can go into Lawrence healthy and and ready to go for a game that really has substance this yeah. year. Really has meaning to it, other than. You know, K-State fans going, oh, God, don't lose, which they say every year. But this is a better KU team. This is a K-State team still exploring to find itself in a new program. And and it would be big for K-State to win. Is there a score Saturday that if K-State lost by it would really upset no. people? Mm-hmm. They could beat 77-0 and people be, well, okay. yeah, probably not happy. It's, it's got to be closer than last year. Last yeah, year's, I, mean, that I was... mean, last year's game was the first – Domino, I thought that pushed Snyder out. No, I agree. It, watching that, I, it was the first time I started to really believe it's probably time for. Man, change. him in the post game, it was just awful. Oh, so could have scored a hundred if they wanted to. Oh no, yeah, well, they took out uh, Kyler Murray with like seven minutes left in the third quarter, roughly. Yeah. I'm guessing, but it was right around the middle of the third. I mean, quarter. if they if they like KU lost to Oklahoma 45-20, if that's what the score is, I think people would understand. Yeah, no, I agree. That's fine, but. You know, somewhat competitive. I, I honestly don't really see a path for K-State to win other than Oklahoma just shooting themselves in the foot over and over and over. Asteroids. Asteroids, yeah. It's always a if, chance. If they don't make the trip and forfeit, perhaps. There's always a chance an asteroid hits their side. Yeah, well. Which, which uh, it, what you just said, I, you guys know that Baylor traveled the day of the game a couple weeks ago? To, to where? Here. Oh, what, really? They flew the day of the game. Wow. I haven't heard of that in a long time. Re- they did, really? They came in day of. Man. Why? That was a 2.30, 230 kick? Yeah. Why would they, they do that? They came in day of. It's called money. They did it to they, save money. Really? Man. I was unaware of that. Yep. Hmm. What? And they Junction still won easily. That expensive? That's uh, well, you know, I, I do think that's. It probably saves you like 10000 on a, a few thousand. hotel. Probably more than that. You stop thinking about it. Yeah, you th- I mean, if you're coming in on a charter, that's an hour and a half flight. Came in day of. You, you know. You probably sleep better the night before that way. I don't know. But you said they did fly up, right? You said they didn't, they didn't on a bus. Yeah, I mean, they, they, yeah, they weren't going to bus from my guess. Okay. They had to leave at 2 a.m. Yeah. But it's, they flew in day of. Wow. That's, huh, that's interesting. Wow. Sorry, I didn't need, mean to knock That's crazy. Derailed everything. But. No, that is pretty... Well, I just remember, like, do you remember a few years ago when uh, Oklahoma had a bunch of issues getting up here? Their charter right. planes broke down, and they had to spend the whole day in the airport, and they didn't get here until, like, 1 a.m. for an 11 a.m. game that and morning. They're and they're staying in Junction City. Yeah, staying in Junction City, and everybody was like, oh, yeah, they're going to be out of sorts. K-State's going to have a chance, and they lost 55 Then it was yeah, like it was John Force <laughs> driving down <laughs> <laughs> straight away at Arlen Park. Yeah, it's from the very start. <laughs> the very start of the game, guys. Oh, this is not going to be a good game. That was, that was a that's what K 
case they can't do. Okay? That, that, you know, just kind of lay down in the road and let get run over is exactly other than that. I think case staters go, okay, Oklahoma's a lot better than us right now, and let's move on to um, the KU game. Yeah, I mean, like Kelly said, I think I, I don't personally see a path to victory for K-State. I think the only – only chance they would have is if, if they're able to somehow replicate the first two games of the season where they just keep Oklahoma's offense off the field as much as possible, even though we know that Oklahoma doesn't really need the ball that much to score because they have such a quick strike offense. And then if they can get some more of these big special team plays, that that's that's it. That, that's the only way. And even then, you know, Oklahoma still might score enough points, like you said, to, to overcome all those mistakes. Yeah, just a play here and there. Yeah. And they would it. have to do what Army did to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly Last right. Year. 13, and just go 14 play drives. Three yards, three yep. yards, three yep. yards, three yards, and just yep. nickel and dive them to that's death. That's exactly right, yeah. To do that, the offensive line has to be a lot better than they were on Saturday. They were getting blown off the ball again, and it's just frustrating to watch. I don't quite understand what's going on with an O-line that played so well in the first three games, and now just keeps moving backwards and is losing the battle. It's, it's frustrating to, to watch it happen because you know these are pretty good players. Maybe there's not an NFL guy on this line, but it should be a cohesive unit. Well, the fact that you know all of them are basically you know seniors, mm-hmm. upperclassmen. I think that's the, probably the most frustrating aspect. Like it's not like they're rolling out <laughs> five freshmen. I mean, they've had a lot that's of guys. Next that, year. Yeah, they they play. <laughs> they have a lot of guys out there that have played a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of games. I mean, that's one of those little stats that Ryan Black from K State they have in their you know their booklets. Just look at how experienced this offensive line is in terms of starts, and they're like I said, they're not playing like it since really game two. Keep Skylar Thompson healthy. Yep. Oh yeah, because. You talk about Murray on the defensive side. They've got a couple of Haases up front. Just you, you got to keep Skyler healthy. And he actually took some hits last game. Took a couple big hits. He needs to. You know, you just he needs to find that balance between um, being safe and being careful and not playing so cautious you don't get anything done. He's, you, he's going to have to tuck the ball and run. This game proved it. Get down. And, but he's got to get out of the way. Get down, get out of bounds, don't take the – Big hit. Uh, Case the, the guys that are wearing the pads and the helmets and the whole nine yards, they know everybody else is not giving them one whiff of a chance this week. So I, I expect them to play inspired football. But you mentioned it, Ryan. Can they not give up the big plays? Because C.D. Lamb, all the, all the wide receivers can get deep in a heartbeat. You've got Brooks and Sermon in the backfield that – can run like crazy. You've got Jalen Hurts that does both. Ultimately, just keep Skyler healthy. Random topic. I saw something on Saturday I hadn't really seen. Max Duggan faking the slide right. to run the ball. Should that be a penalty? Because the first time I saw it, I go, that should be a penalty. Because the the once you start your slide, the defender has to pull up. Because it's supposed to be down right there if you start your slide. Refresh my memory. What play is this? It was, happened earlier, and it happened multiple times. Yeah, he would. He when he would run the ball, he would start like he was going right. to slide, and then continue to run because the defender would pull up. Because I asked about that on the on the field on Saturday, after about the third time it happened, because Coach Kleiman was getting rather irritated, Should be. and he had Mike Defee's ear. One entire timeout, and that's what the topic was. Is that's the the right word is not going to come out here, but that's that, that's what's wrong with that rule because the defender will still get penalized, but the offensive player doesn't. So what should have happened if it wasn't the first time, the second time it happened, is the ball would have been dead, should have been dead right where he faked that he was going down. And that didn't happen. Then he didn't do it the rest of the game. But from the first time he faked that slide, the ball should have been dead right, right there. He did it right in front of the side official line judge, whatever that was over there. And I, then I got to pay more attention. I and then that. the <laughs> hit by Elijah Sullivan, he actually launched before he even started. That was a slide. terrible call. That was an absolutely god awful terrible call. I also think if you do that, I, I actually thought the call was right because they called it helmet to helmet. It's which is what it was. Well, again, it, and I said this on. Yeah, I feel bad for Sullivan because what else are you going to do? But well, again, I said time, it on Twitter. His Kellis, helmet, his helmet hit the quarterback's. It's the foot. difference between intent versus letter of the rule. 
And, you know, I mean, like I said, by the letter of the rule, that is what it should be. But, again, it was not intent. He did not purposely launch himself into the opposing quarterback's helmet. And to answer your question, because this is a topic that I'm fairly passionate about, yes, Fitz, it should be a penalty, but it's not going to be because the way the powers that be in in the television booths and everywhere else – all they want now is offense, and they want it to be basketball on grass. Right. So it will not be penalized because, God forbid, that we do anything to help the defenses anymore. That's All right. it is is about is the offense. So, no, it won't be a penalty. And I'm sure that they're, they're going to encourage they do this because, like I said, they want every game to be 70 to 68. So TV ratings are there, and there's more fans in the seats, and da-da-da-da-da. I don't believe that, but that's what's going to happen. They are not going to do anything about it because, again, whatever they can do to help the offense is going to be what happens. Jeez. Well, there you go. Wow. Guy over here is for more helmet-to-helmet contact. Well, I mean, here, here's something that's going to make a lot of people mad. XFL comes out in the spring. Well, I mean, this is what I, no, well my, my thing is this. <laughs> I was just, like Sherman marching to the sea. That e- was definitive, e- man. E- every passing record in the NFL in the past 10 years should be taken with a grain of salt. Because I mean, all they've do I mean, okay. everything they've done is protect the quarterbacks and make it where the the you know defensive backs can't even touch a receiver, you know, and and now they're going to be review and pass interference. I mean, it's just, I mean, and I'm not saying that Patrick Mahomes, these other guys are not un- incredible quarterbacks, but it's not the same game that it was when Dan Marino was playing there were, 30 years ago. There were three calls on Saturday that were just ungood. Yeah, the pass okay. interference call down near the south end zone wasn't ungood. pass interference. I like ungood. Um, well, and there was a. You didn't think that one was pass interference? No. He had his hands all over him. Both did. I thought they were they're hand good. fighting. Both did. They were hand fighting. And there was grabbing. Uh, the wide receiver grabbed. Uh, who was Parker, the wasn't it? Yeah, I, was th- I wanted to say AJ. There were three calls that were just. I'll guarantee you this. There were at least the three I'm thinking of, if not a couple of more, that wound up in the conference office Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. uh, well, because, Kellis, well, I'm not surprised that you didn't, uh, you know, you agreed with the Elijah Sullivan call because you also disagreed with me on the Uh-oh. play where Tommy Stevens got hit as he was going out of bounds and the K-State defender, I cannot remember, it was Parker, wasn't it? Because Parker had multiple penalties. It was Wayne, it was, was that Wayne Jones, Jones or Parker? Wayne I think Jones, Jones okay. grabbed him two yards out of bounds but, and then threw him but ten he, yards no, out of but bounds. He had already, but he had already grabbed him as he was, you know, when he got to the sideline. Okay, so like, if, if you make a move in bounds, then you can just lie to dude up. Well, my, my thing is, like, at what point do you give the defender a chance to at least stop his momentum? Like, he has to be able to stop on a dime. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying, Kellis? It's like, I mean, that's like saying, like, there's these Mack trucks. I mean, they can't stop on a dime. Is that, is that I mean, I'm just saying, at what well, point the do you draw the particular you're talking about is not only did he not stop, he grabbed the guy two feet out of bounds and then no. threw him further I'm with, out of bounds. I'm with Kellis no, on that no. one. <laughs> This is good. And the other one would have been fine, <laughs> except that Georgia he hit fire. his helmet well, with his own helmet. I just, just don't do that. The one thing I, I want to make sure that people are I'm not saying that all I want well, I mean, are games. Why, why is your helmet on the ground if you don't want to commit the penalty? Go with your head up. You avoid the whole thing. I just want to make sure that I, I clarify that I'm not saying that what I want to see is 7-0 games. I just want it to be fair. And Dude, I That's think, what was great about Saturday is that was an old school football game. Yeah. I know. There wasn't a bunch of scoring. It was nah, good defense yeah. for the most part. Yeah, like I, said, I like games end in the 20 to 30s because it means there are some big plays, you think, each way, and then some good defensive plays, When's too. But I, I, don't, I don't like And it. you can almost remember every big play because there wasn't so many you were overwhelmed. When's the last time you got that fired up? Uh, well, people at work <laughs> would Verbally, tell you. Verbally, not on, not on paper. Oh, well, people at work would tell you it happens every day. Okay. When, oh, when wow. I, like, in design crashes and I'm designing a page or I hear just really stupid stuff about you know I I don't want to go too far off topic here but You're like, like young me LeBron James is a great player but I just cannot get over the fact that he's lost twice as many finals as he's won but he's somehow the greatest player of all time that's just me but of course you know all these millennials who never saw Michael Jordan because they they were literally not even infants yet just have to just I'm, I better stop. You should give him his own podcast. I was just Ryan thinking. Rance. Ryan Rance. <laughs> I love it. That'd be a column idea for you. I love it. Uh, wow. Anyway, again, I just want to try to clarify that again. I, I, Let him go. I, I, I said don't, like 19 words in half a second right there. I, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want like 7-0 games. I just, I just don't like the way it is now in pro and college where it's just everything is so tilted. How to many be yards of total offense will Oklahoma have Saturday? 550. Yeah, I was going to say like five, or just past 500, like 525, 550. I'll yeah. go with 605. Okay. How many yards of total offense will K State have on Saturday? It'll also have an 05 in it. 330? 350. I Whoa. think they get some garbage time in yards. I'll be optimistic. That is. <laughs> <laughs> K State's had less than 300 their last two go- uh, ball games. It's unbelievable, man. 
they got to solve it. Well, they can't run the ball. That's the problem. Back Other to that offensive line. Well, got to get it done. Not having Jordan Brown does not help. Mm-hmm. Joe Irvin didn't play. Yeah. I found that interesting. Yeah, I did. He did? Yeah, Irvin yeah. was in there. He came in. Jacardi, you right, played too. One play. Why? Either play him or don't play him. I guess it. I guess that answers the question. Jordan Brown's going to play when he's available, and Joe Irvin's going to play and blow the red shirt. Doesn't matter. They're just you, you can't. Gotta, you got to have, have him. him. Yeah. Because let's be blunt here. As we've gotten into conference play and we started to see it, Harry Trotter just isn't as effective now in conference play. He just isn't. He's going to have to be in there in a few snaps, but uh, you, you need that complimentary back to to Gilbert. And it's not Harry right now. What is a big plus for Kansas State? Did we do a read? Did I skip it again? Yep. It's all right. Lee. You know, I'm good at this. Does that annoy you too, Ryan? Well, you know what I was going to say earlier was that I think what would be a great thing is if you, from that first read as you're going into the, the commercial, is if you start playing the play, like the call on the Duggan touchdown, and it starts playing, and then it goes through all the commercials, and it's still literally playing as you come back because that's how long <laughs> it took him to score. That's just an idea. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love him. He's our little Georgia peach. Oh. I do want to touch on Wyatt Hubert because. <laughs> Man, you Again? already you touched Man. on What's Malik Knowles. A lot of touching I, today. I, Handsy. I, Handsy fit. You're wanting to do this because? It is the hair. Feeling lonely over there? That that play. That <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Callis, you got to remember, he's, he's been playing with less than 100% since birth. He's just doing what he can. <laughs> yeah, for a while now, it's been really bad. <laughs> The stuff I could say. Uh, he made a huge play Saturday uh, against TCU. <laughs> He's his best defender. He really is. Uh, boy, we're off the rails. Yeah, I love it. What are we talking about? Uh, How about Wyatt Hubert? Me playing with oh, Wyatt yeah. Hubert. Uh, boy, Wyatt Hubert. It, he's going to have to continue to evolve into that type of guy. Because K-State just you got to have a playmaker, whether it's offense or defense, and he's the guy that can be that. It's not a safety. I know that. The D tackles are good but not great, and the corners are like – but back to what Ryan said. If you're a corner, you're just hanging on for dear life, no matter how good you are. So it's pretty much got to be defensive end, and Wyatt Hubert is kind of the playmaker right now. Well, I was going to ask you guys this because, again, I've only been here for, for two and a half seasons. It's like – Watching what Hubert was able to do on that last meaningful drive for TCU, I, I tweeted about that. I've only seen, since I've been covering college football, only like three other players who ever could have taken over a game like that uh, defensively, at least from a lineman or a linebacker standpoint. And I didn't know when's the last time K-State had someone like that. Jordan Willis. Jordan Willis. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying, it was before, I just know it had to have been someone before yeah. I got here. Because I remember I got here and Will, Will Geary was quite good. Uh, and I'm still expecting a little more from Trey Deshaun. Hadn't really happened yet this season. I but, uh, but I was just I was just curious from your guys' perspective as when's the last time they've had a lineman that seems as disruptive as he is, especially off the edge. Yeah, Jordan Willis. Okay. Willis. Mueller was good at times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Junior year. Mm-hmm. If you want to include linebackers, the best I've ever seen was Arthur Brown. He had some games where he was basically just a black hole. Mm. You couldn't even run at him. Yeah, I, the Baylor game. I saw him on Friday, Jeff Kelly. Yeah, I saw him on Saturday. Yeah. You go way back to Darren Howard off the off the Nile Wyron. I mean, we're way back. Mm-hmm. But yeah, most recently is Jordan Willis. But yeah, Hubert is special. Only a sophomore, mm-hmm. um, it, and he's going to have to continue to do that again. I don't know if there's anything to be done with Oklahoma, but the following Saturday in Lawrence, particularly with the RPOs, he's going to have to be dominant because that the RPO puts a lot of pressure on the DNs and the safeties to make the proper read. And if you don't, you pay dearly. Or dearmanly. Ta- dear nah. Word tackling will be one that gets used <laughs> a lot next week. Well, if Hubert just gets back there so fast, he tackles both. Running yes. back and I've quarterback. I've seen that. Yeah, it's good. That's a, f- a very effective way to handle the <laughs> RPO. Just tackle everyone. Well, I saw that D. Scott, you know, D. Scott Fritchin here for, I guess, I mean, you would think everyone listening to this podcast know who he is, right? But I just feel like I need uh-huh. to say it full name. Uh that he thought this was the worst tackling defense K State has had since '04, and I was like, I thought last year they were very poor tackling. Like I remember that that Baylor game; it was like every run that Baylor had, it seemed like they couldn't wrap up. And, I mean, but I, I would agree with D. It's oh wow, okay. it's the worst since Steiner 1.0's ending, hmm. 04 and 05. It's bad, but it it can get better. It will get better, and Kansas State does get the win over TCU to move to four and two on the season. It's been a weird, strange journey, but they look so good, they look so bad, and I think on Saturday we kind of saw 
where they actually are. They kind of settled into the middle of the good and the bad, good enough to win, bad enough to uh, have plenty to talk about on podcasts such as this. Never as good as you think you are or as bad as you think you are. That, that is true, especially for me, functioning Maybe at 35%. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's, it's dropped oh, two it's more. Up now. No, 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 no. It's dropped two percent. It was, was thirty. It? it was thirty-seven earlier. Ke- well, Kellis, I he's like, said forty-five. It's, part no, part no, of 30, uh, thirty-seven now to thirty-five. So what's happening? Oh, he's like man. a phone that's discharging. It's your like, your hey. rants send him down. Well, part of <laughs> I would hope that given him new life. <laughs> Every rant lowers him a percentage. Oh man. Point. Part of the uh, percentage dropping is a lack of memory. Oh. So thus remembering remembering what percentage I'm at is difficult. Gentlemen, thank you. It's been fun. Hopefully next week uh, we have plenty to talk about as Kansas. State State defeats Oklahoma 63 to nothing. Maybe some more players for you to touch on. I, I like touching players. <laughs> Will Oklahoma be in the final four? Yes. I, yes, because I don't think though I don't think anyone will beat them in the conference. I think they're good enough to play poorly and win. They did it against Texas. Uh, and I think this is going to be a very intriguing year because we're going to have four really good teams in that in that final four, so to speak. This, this might actually be the year Oklahoma makes it all the way to the title game. But yeah, got just because their defense is better. I mean, you guys know it's going to be, I think, you know, obviously the winner of, of like Ohio State, Penn State. Clemson's not going to lose unless even as badly as it. I mean, guys, this is what I'm going to say about Clemson real quick. If you can give me one more mm-hmm. mini rant. Go for it. The, the Clemson Tigers right now, because of the way their schedule is and just the, how poor the ACC is, they're basically like the Lakers in like 2004. Where like they basically just like yeah, the regular season doesn't mean anything. We'll just flip a switch in the just playoffs, yeah. and then they they made it all the way to the finals, lost to Detroit Pistons, and that's when they traded Shaq in the off season, all kind of other things. But I'm saying Clemson will be there when it matters. They're going to be in the final four. So then it'll either be Ohio State, Penn State. It'll be whoever wins the SEC, be it Alabama, uh, LSU. Can you I say th- Detroit again, please? Detroit, <laughs> Detroit, Detroit. Loved it. Uh, and then uh, who, who, and it'll be Oklahoma. The only way. Yeah, what I think will be interesting, I guess, if Oklahoma does lose, but and they end up having one loss to the champion, they're not in. Do, so, do you think it'll be a second SEC team? Do you think it'll be yeah. a one-loss team from the Pac-12? Because this is LSU, Alabama is not going to fall below four. Okay. Well, let's just put it this way: if the Final Four, the playoffs, are Oklahoma, Alabama, Clemson, and LSU, what do those four teams have in common? Really good quarterbacks. Oh yeah. Really, really good quarterbacks. And my apologies to the Ohio State quarterback. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, Justin Fields. Ohio oh, State's Justin good. Fields is good, too. Yeah. Not yeah. a single and vote for Baylor that, here. The only one that's banged up is Tua at the moment. That's right. And w- w- that's going to be very interesting to see what, what they do without him because, I mean, we saw, guys, that's where it's so interesting now with the transfer portal. They don't have Jalen Hurts to come in and save them this time. So, no. you, And their defense isn't as good. It's maybe I, the worst. I think Alabama probably has someone else who can play. Well, QB. I'm just saying, well, I think the thing is Alabama just has so many weapons as long as you don't. It's kind of like one of those things where you just, like you mentioned that John Force reference earlier, just keep the car in a straight line. You know, they have so many weapons everywhere. They should be okay. But I will say, <laughs> on paper, this is the worst Alabama <laughs> defense I've seen probably since his first year. We got him thing, out of the SEC, man. He's last, rolling. Last thing I'm going to say, because okay. this is my own little bubble. Sure. The most unique story of everything in college football this year is LSU's offense. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. A period. I agree. <laughs> well, he's already set the, the – Burrow's already set their single-season touchdown record. And, you know, five games to go in the regular season, and who knows where they go from there. Kellis but, mentioned right. Army against Oklahoma, three yards, three yards, three yards. That's what LSU has was until been. this year. And yeah. Maybe that's why Les Miles changed offensive coordinators. Finally saw the light. Yeah. Just took him getting fired by LSU. <laughs> if LSU can do it, <laughs> took, so can Kansas. He's still eating grass. I hope not. Plus – and they play on a turf field or right, so that does make it more difficult, I guess. All that? right, I'm out. Got to bring your own. <laughs> yeah, I guess we we need to. Let's get, this is gonna find some kind of ending point. And I apologize for screwing Fitz up fault. there. It's fine. He's it's now fine. down to like thirty percent. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. This concludes this edition of the Powercat Insiders Podcast, sponsored by Commerce Bank. And uh, the first ever edition of the Ryan's Rant, sponsored by Hardy's Boiled Peanuts. We're done. <laughs> Period. You've been listening to the PowerCat Insiders Podcast, presented by Commerce Bank. PowerCat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked. Temperature set. Lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.